All right, guys, coming at you here in the Division 1 of the Blitz World Series for the Brute Map. It's been a long month. It's been a long month. We've come a long ways. A lot of action so far. Worked through five divisions. Now we're on D1. Uh, we got six players here today. They're all going to play each other best of one. Top two go on to the championship for that $30 prize. And they win their way into the Pro Division for next month. So that's going to be fun. Something to look forward to. Uh, quick reminder, guys. Next month, again, we're running this. We're running another tournament. We got a new map, more cash prizes, more divisions. New players are welcome. If you guys want to come play some Blitz, be sure to join the Discord. Uh, link in the description if you're on YouTube. Uh, if you're on Twitch, you can type exclamation mark discord come play guys we're always looking for new players um seriously new players welcome um that's a lot of fun a lot of fun all right so right away point number one we are going to see the gi rush uh, i think we'll be seeing this quite a bit today the question is how do you counter it and that ooh, and that rhino is a pretty good start okay so that bunker so so you see here the strategy with this bunker trying to get the gis on flat ground now i think that this is still scary i think the gis can outrange this if the GIs can outrange the bunker, you're going to be in trouble. Ravage opting for Rhino is going to try to run over the GIs. And Ravage doesn't even try to grab his huts. Um, doesn't even try to grab his huts. The GIs are coming in, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be a quick GG. Yeah, the GIs are devastating. I know Snark kind of got Snark kind of got warmed up today. Uh, you're going to have to have a very very specific strategy in mind for this. If you guys are in this division, uh, be ready for this. Um, players that are going allied expect this from them. Um, there's a few different ways to counter it, like we've talked about. Uh, at this point, if you haven't practiced the GI counter, uh, you're going to be in for a long day. But um, there are certainly counters. Um, I think probably, I think probably flak tracks are my favorite at the moment, but hard to say for sure. Point number two of the day. We got Saw in yellow on the left. We got MZIN in red on the right. Now, Saw, we saw Saw in D2. Saw's a beast. Saw's an absolute beast. But MZIN's a tough player as well here. Um, yeah, hard to say. Snark, you've had some good points with MZIN. He's a good player. Uh, yeah, I mean, I played MZIN a few games today. I gotta say, he kicked my ass, but that was before Luke and already trained me. So uh, we'll have to see if uh, he can uh, keep up with me after that training. But we are seeing, uh, you know, Soviet for Soviet, a bit of a different look. And MZIN straight with the War Factory. Saw, on the other hand, oil first. Are you an oil first kind of guy, Ivor, or are you a war factory first kind of guy? I think, you know, we just never see that that first Rhino get much done anyway, and almost always I think the little economic boost seems to be beneficial. I do think the oil first makes more sense. What do you think? I was an oil first kind of guy. Uh, I'm going to disagree just because you said it. Nice. But uh, obviously you're right. Uh, we are getting some lag, Ivor. Yeah, MZIN often, often has uh, connection issues today, but I know he's been playing a few games today, so hopefully uh, hopefully we can push through it here. Um, it uh, looks like it's back running full speed. Nice. So both players secure their huts. So after you got the four huts against Ravage, that must have been a good feeling. Once the GI takes the hill, uh, it's definitely a good good sign from there, huh? Yeah, I think, I think it's crucial for Soviet. Either if you're going to be facing Allied and you're going to be facing a potential GI rush, grab those huts. It is so... You, like, force the GIs to go all the way around or lose a million GIs on those on those huts. So crucial. Oh, the drone gets That's in. Drone. Beautiful droning skill from uh, MZIN there. Yep. And MZ radar. MZIN looking tough. So the radar out. We saw, saw thinking he's behind already. Going to bring out an early Desolator. Very early for a Desolator. A very early time to be like, wow, I'm behind. Here come, I'm need, I need a Desolator. But... Um, I don't know. Maybe he just feels that. I don't know if he feels like behind. You know, maybe he's uh, he's you know Latov always he makes desolators and uses desolators. Maybe he's a uh, he's a Latov kind of guy. You know, he knows he he knows how to use desolators so that they're worth more than another war factory. Who knows here? But yeah, MZN looking strong at the moment. We see MZN on five oils. Saw on five oils as well, but with a radar extra second war factory now comes out for MZN. So MZN is going to be ahead a little bit ahead on tank production. I'm making the radar, but not making. There we go. First deso just comes out. Yep, so the Desolator out now, yeah. And the Desolator, this map, also the Desolator could be viable early on. As we've seen, the fodder gets so much. There's so much fodder early on with these pair drops. There's so many conscripts running around. And if you can use your Desolators to neutralize your opponent's uh, conscripts and then get yours out instead, uh, obviously it does give you a nice little edge early on. Battle Lab now, ooh, very early tech for Saw. Does he have the, the money here to push into? And the Sentry Gun's out, so he's looking to play passive here and try to get his tech out. Yeah, he's going to play defensive here. Now, on this map, there is a big danger in playing defensive. And what is that? The Mutator, right? If you don't yep. have map control, your opponent has the Mutator. And that we, we spoke about the synergy of the Mutator and the Paradrops. That's huge, Ivor. It's huge. 
Yep, and that was exactly, I mean, the concept with this map and, and all Blitz maps at this point is trying to give some incentive for the aggressor, for the map control. You know, that's the kind of gameplay we want. That's the excitement of the gameplay. And so, you know, the player that's up gets that genetic mutator and it can be big, especially neutralizing desolators can be very nice as well. Absolutely, but we see MZIN. There we go. He's gonna get the mutator. Oh, oh. he desolates his own. Desolates What's his own what mutator. What's Saw doing? What is Saw doing? He doesn't have the numbers to push in here. Oh, look at that deso hit, though. That deso hit. Yeah, no. But even then, so. Oh. Should not have pushed in there, Ivor. You so, do not want to push in when you have less tanks. What? <laughs> yeah. Someone write that one down in Blitz Theory 101. Do not attack if you have less tanks. So, okay, so Sark, what we saw there was, Saw, for whatever reason, was scared of MZIN's traditional look. He said, okay, this kid's gonna get ahead of me on Rhinos. I'm not gonna beat him Rhino to Rhino. And then he said, I have a plan. And then he executed his plan. He got his tech up. He got the preemptive sentry guns. He started playing defensively. He got his desolators and he was gonna push tech. He had the Iron Curtain coming. He had his battle app. And then all of a sudden he just, he just forgot. <laughs> He's like, yeah. all of a sudden he forgot that he was playing the tech game and just just charged in. Um, very Absolutely. odd. Path, Path is a wild player, but it, it comes from his desire to be a showman. Like, Path is a showman. Like, Path always says it on his streams, like, I play for your entertainment. And you really see that. I mean, Path is known for uh, doing going Kirovs and drones very quickly and traditional, which is not a normal thing. He calls himself the madman. We call him the madman. Uh, and then we got Gene in here, obviously another traditional top level uh, player. And like like you just said, Snark, both these guys uh, would be in the pro division if they were committed to Blitz, but they don't play much Blitz. So um, this should be an interesting uh, point. I think largely the winner of this will likely come down to who got more reps in on the map. Um, you know, it's very possible, like we've seen with Gene here. Gene's very possible. Gene has not really played them. Anyway, we'll see how we'll see how it goes. If you had to bet right now, Snark, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it's it's like, so so Paf is going to be the wild card. So if I'm going to have to bet consistently, it's going to be on Gene. Gene is a more consistent player. Uh, you know, probably usually ranks higher on QM. Oh, oh, and he's alt. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. And Gene is not afraid to play dirty. Paf tried to make his bunker attack the ground. It was a little too late. And he does lose his early war factor here. Bunkering up, going highly defensive strategy here, Paf is. Uh, Gene pushing in with early, early aggro. Does Path have what it takes to hold on here? Yep. Let's see the factories back up. Path's defense is a bit out of position. I think he could probably get in and he could harass these and more bunkers. Drones out from Path. Very, very interesting. Oh, he's going to try to get the engineer in the war factory. Not going to work. Alts another yep. war. Oh. So he's attacking the ground with bunkers. He's attacking the ground with bunkers. He doesn't want to destroy his own war factory. And these drones are cleaning up Gene's armor, but the war factory does go down. It did cost Gene quite a bit, though, but Path is still behind. No War Factory versus War Factory. We're seeing here five oils versus three oils. Gene is ahead. Yep, and does have that drone still. So he does get a drone in. And these bunkers, yeah, he's he's got a tight base here, but pair drop on the top side might lose that oil top left. And a pair drop of Path's own on top alt, right. Another alt, another alt, another <laughs> alt! Oh, no. doesn't get it this time. Now, a little little stop in the action here, Snark. Uh, okay, talk to me about the alt. What is the counter? So you, you saw Path shooting the ground there. What do you do if your alt war factory is getting alted? Uh, so first of all, if you, if you have bunkers uh, to defend your war factories and whatever, stopping the alt is hard. It's very hard because what you're going to have to do is grab your bunkers. By the way, if you click your T button and click on a bunker, it's going to select all the bunkers at once. Oh, nice. Okay. All right, so you're going to want to attack the ground and then just spam drones, right? Because drones don't do not do damage to the war factory, so they're just going to damage the tanks. Uh, alting is, again, when the tanks go onto your war factory and then your own units are attacking your own buildings. Yep, so while the while you have the tank on the ramp of the war factory, when you're shooting the tank, it's doing damage to the building. And then the strategy with the drones as well, because every time the doors open, then the alt stops, right? Wait, did, did an Ivan just get a bomb down? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, 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 madman style here. Uh, oh there is my. A, 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 oh, so close. And path, path out with a dreadnought. Uh -oh. Path uh -oh. out with a dreadnought. Yeah, so, so this is path, classic path. Only drones. Go early tech, get a dreadnought out, get a Kirov out, perhaps. We're going to see what he's going to do here. He's surviving amazingly with bunkers and drones here. And now the dreadnought is out. What is Gene's counter to this? This is madman style right here. This is what Path loves doing, and this is why we call him the bad man. Look at this base. You think he's a medium AI, <laughs> but no. A player like Gene can't get through this, and now he has a dreadnought in his base. You think he's a medium AI. <laughs> I 
love that. Drones out to support the Dreadnought. The Dreadnought can need to target the flat cannon first, but that Battle Lab's out of position. Desolator now to support. Drones coming. So he gets the flat cannon, and, and with only one Dreadnought, Gene can pretty easily anti-air and protect. Uh, Path gonna lose his airport top left. Another crazy Ivan out. This is a lot to follow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so this Ivan is going to go in as well. If he could uh, get a bog down on some oils, there's one oil here that's going to take down two war factories with it. If Path could get that, that's going to be huge. In the meantime, he does lose uh, his airport, like you said. So Gene with a huge, huge army of tanks here. Does Path have enough to defend against this huge army? There's one Dreadnought, like you said, Flag Cannon, enough to counter that pretty easily. Here comes the Flag Track, but Gene does see it. So Path is very good at microing his... Uh, his splits with his uh, with his uh, Ivans or whatever. Let's see if Path can hold on here. What is Path building? He's on 8K. Well, what is he, he needs, building? He, building needs, he needs his battle lab. So if you guys are confused about what's happening here, uh, Gene did get in and take out Path's battle lab. And the problem with building your base the size of an acorn is that his battle lab is going to have to be exposed here. And then Gene can just keep knocking down his tech. Without the battle lab, uh, Path does not have an offensive tool. He needs about he needs about five more uh, dreadnoughts realistically, you know. And yeah, it's yeah, hard to get. And Absolutely, and Gene is now taking up, which means Path is going to be in trouble. The Battle Lab does come back up. Um, Path on 10k should be spamming out those Desos at least, you know, constant Desos. Yeah, uh, he needs to, make yeah. it to get Gene out of time to push in here, but the IC is out for Gene and Kirov, a Kirov out for Path. Okay, Kirov coming now. He's probably building. So now the nuclear reactor, now now the Iron Curtain. I'd like to see some bunkers. I'd like to see a lot of desolators. Yeah, like you said, Path on 10k. He needs the desolators. Gene could realistically almost push in here. Um, oh, he's, Gene has his Iron Curtain coming. Could be a game-ending Iron Curtain, realistically. Um, going to be oh, devastating. Oh, Path is going to do true to his Madman style. The Kirov is going to go right to the top of the map where it exits the map where we don't even see it. You could only see the shadow. <laughs> and he's going to try to bring it on top of the map in here. Uh, that's Ivan. I hear a ticking bomb. Okay, it was just a power plant. It does get sold. And now Gene out with his own naval yard. So Path's Dreadnought is about to get countered hard. So, you know, we haven't seen people do this before, Snark, but it seems intuitive to me, and I'm a terrible player. Uh, you bring a couple subs over, you camp your opponent's harbor so they can't build a naval yard. That would work, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's only, like, two positions in each base where you can make a naval yard, yeah. and you could easily fill that up with units so that you can't... Uh, Naval control is easy to gain and crucial here. We see a squid taking that out, and another crazy Ivan. Okay, but he does four shield. Did, now, so does the, does the does force shield explode. does the force shield remove the bomb or it just is protecting no. against the bomb, right? The bomb goes up, but nothing happens. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. So drones. Ah. So path. Now this iron curtain from Gene. So Gene wants to absorb these drones. Oh, path sends the drones. That's not that's not the move, right? Because the iron curtain will evict them. Well, he, he, oh. Gene wants an offense curtain path wants a defensive iron curtain so path is going to try to put these drones in as early as possible so that gene doesn't get a good iron curtain off but he oh. does despite it. and now he's going to go in what's his target here he's going to go for the lab first oh Interesting. no shield what's, now i see ah I the, okay but now the dreadnought is in path doorstep it's looking good for gene right now oh gene now yeah gene and path had such early naval control wasn't able to secure it um, ultimately just wasn't able to, to keep his battle lab tech up, wasn't able, without that battle lab tech, he didn't have the offensive tools he needed, um, and then Path loses out, but hey, uh, definitely entertaining. <laughs> All right, so what do we got? We got Soviet versus Ally, we got Path this time, now we did see SVS with Path, we saw AVA with Path, and now we're going to get to see AVS with Path, Path gets to be allied here. Martin going for the Soviet look here. Uh, control of the center, Ivor, I cannot underline how important control of the center is on this map. Yep, yep, and especially, I mean, in the huts, those huts are strong, especially early game. They really uh, kind of zone out your opponent. If your opponent chooses to engage, ooh, and path. And that's the opening we saw. We saw Snark with that same opening there for the UZU players, anyone who's playing this map. Getting your dogs over first. You can't send your infantry on a death run. Um, it's just not a good idea. Um, so interesting to see path going allied here, but path not bringing the GI rush. That would obviously be too normal for the madman. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Martin with early, early, early aggro here. Oh, the eagle. Okay, the eagle is going to go in for one hit here. Does Path have enough to defend here? He needs to get that eagle out of there to defend it. But that means it's not going to be refilling its shot, which is not what Path wants. Path definitely yeah. wants that to be filling its shot. And uh, oh, this AFC is okay. The eagle did, I think it does, does have, it its have a shot. Does it have a shot? No, oh, oh. He did not have time. Oh, it's going to go down. It's going to go down. Okay, the FC does go down. Sniper goes down as well. Didn't have the, you know, attack speed. And wow, Martin coming in here hard 
with a big attack here, Ravage is. Yep, Ravage okay, looking does defend. Ravage looking nice though. I like this. He got the one flat cannon to deal with the Rockies. Um, he's choosing the right targets, getting away from the pillboxes. Doesn't have a big enough army to really engage with them right now. Uh, but getting early value here. But Ravage is starting to go broke here on four oils though. He should be catching up soon. Yeah, Path also on four oils as well. Can he get the war factor here? This could be huge. Oh, he does get it. Uh, yeah, uh, Gene, the oils can be sealed. E every building can be sealed except the genetic mutator. The only weird, the only weird rule: nothing can be engineered, and uh, the oils cannot be attacked by Chrono Legionnaires. All right, so Ravage Map right. Control gonna grab the mutator. Good move. Yeah, definitely a huge move, especially versus Allied here. And he, Path doesn't have a double para drop anymore, which means uh, he's gonna have a hard time defending his base here. Does have a Navy Seal in that uh, IFV though? We're gonna see if he can get something done with it. Uh, Martin does see, Savage Ravage does see it and is trying to defend here. Oh, does he get in? Oh, oh, gets crushed. Man, I'll tell you what, this was a juicy target. Ravage's three oils top side. If you could have came around that top side, got in there, all three oils exploding like that would have really kicked Ravage's economy in the nuts. But uh, the seal attack does get stuffed and Paths coming with another one. The question is, can he choose the target correctly and can he micro that IFV? Now, uh, you know, the thing... Uh, other people who are really really good at using seals and engineers and all that what they do is they attack a useless attack but a distracting attack oh right 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 you send a couple grizzlies bottom side you seal top side oh he's gonna he's gonna he's juicing up two ifvs i like this is he gonna go top bottom a little high a little low i like that Fancy moves here out of the madman, and he has ticked up. The mirages are getting pumped out here. Now the later gets uh, into into the game. It's going to be harder for Soviet on tier one tech to do anything. Oh, he's going for the airport. Does get the airport. Gets a sentry gun oh. as well. Oh! 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 <laughs> oh and the conscript kills him. Yeah. Holy! And that's pretty. Oh, that's pretty good out. value there. Um, but I mean, but what do we do about these rhinos? Mirage tanks are out. I think he needs about ten more mirages than he has. He is going to get the MCV here. Oh, Path. Oh. He might have been able to get that if Path would have been on it. Yeah, he's going to lose some oils up top here. He did force the move, which is always a good move here. And uh, what is Path making out of the naval yard? I want to see an aircraft carrier ASAP. Can he hold with... The, does he have enough mirages to hold this amount of rhinos? I'm worried. I'm really worried for Path right now. He's going for another IFV. I think another seal's on his way. <laughs> here we go. He does have four grizzlies in the bottom left. The aircraft carrier coming in as well. But uh, these, these grizzlies went in way too late. They're not going to get anything done. No, there isn't a flat cannon right away, though. Maybe he was hoping to damage the MCV, but the aircraft carrier should be shooting right now. That MCV was at quarter health. Uh, he might have been able to get that MCV before a flat cannon got in position. But you know what? Ravage might not see these aircraft carriers, because now we have two aircraft carriers in position. Uh, and that he's, yeah, Path waiting for them both to shoot at the same time. Can he get the MCV here? Going for the oil. He's going for the oil. Oh! <laughs> oh. Yep. And, he gets uh, a huge hit. And uh, yeah, I mean, and we've talked about that, you know, every time I know people as a spectator are always like, why did he build his oil there? Why did he build his oil there? It's hard, guys. There's a lot going on. People forget. I mean, Ravage helped me code the oils. You know, he's a big part of the oils. He's helped me test the oils. So he knows better oh. than everyone, but he learned the lesson there. Oh, and now Ravage pushing in these mirages, but there's, it's a decent amount of mirages. Uh, he can't push this bot. Oh, but there comes oh, the, the mutator. This could be huge. Is it enough? Oh, and another oh, oil explosion. And so Ravage down to one oil. Oh my God. Oh, wait. Ravage saved. Oh, Ravage had a service depot. <laughs> and he saw Path coming in with all those. He made a service <laughs> depot. Wow. wow. Oh, my God. I've never seen it. Well, I've never seen. Uh, I've never seen. Um, I've never seen it. I've never seen uh, an MC I've never seen an MCV. I don't know. I don't know in Blitz if we've seen that before. I mean, obviously, you build a service depot, you build an MCV. We never, ever see it, though. Absolutely. Yeah, and so Ravage diving on the oil is upset about the splash damage not affecting the tanks enough. Um, Ravage now getting upset and angry. Uh, yeah, you would, um, yeah, you, you know, Path's one of those players where when you lose to someone doing this wacky stuff, it's very, very frustrating. Um, you know, oh. Ravage. Oh! And the Eagles. Huge the oil hit. Yeah, the Eagles coming in doing damage, but Path is the one that's completely broke. Ravage with 13k in the bank, he can rebuild. Path is the one that's going to be in trouble here. And a huge yep. arm coming in from Ravage. Oh, this could be very problematic. Yep, and... Uh, he has enough to hold here. Yep, and so Ravage needs to gun down. Last time he was trying to target buildings, trying to get value offensively. He needs to just click down the tanks, I think. Um, but, oh yeah, Ravage will hold... Or, sorry, uh, Path will hold this, but Path again is broke. 
Ravage on 10k. So Ravage on 10k for War Factories, despite the offensive value Paps gotten, uh, Ravage is just going to keep sending swarms and Paps sells. <laughs> Paps sells his MCV in an attempt to gain some money, some value here. He's trying to desperately hold on. That oil is going to explode, and Paps' base is shrinking and dwindling. Ravage rebuilding his MCV. That's so funny. We never see that, Ivor. Yeah, yeah. And another genetic yeah. mutator. Ravage getting decent value out of the genetic mutator. Yeah, huge value out of the genetic mutator. And Ravage is going to close up the game here, but the naval yard is out of reach. Oh, the naval yard. <laughs> so Ravage <laughs> has to bring down a V3 rocket now, right? Yeah, V3 rocket or something. I mean, the only thing uh, I think Path can make is destroys, and he doesn't have any oil, so he can't even make that. And here come the V3 rockets. GG's called by Path. So Ravage takes that one home, but uh, Path sure made him work for it, and the madman goes out in style. Um... <laughs> Game versus Saw, so like you said, like you mentioned a second ago, Ivor, that first game versus MZN was extremely interesting because he had a strategy, he was executing it perfectly, but then he made a blunder, right? So is he the type of guy, again, I'm just repeating what you're saying, is he the type of guy to like go back to the bench, plan it out perfectly, or like you said, there's got to be a tilt element, right? Yeah, there's definitely, I mean, it's, it's really hard to say, but you definitely can't feel good after a point like that when you had a strategy and made that mistake. But uh, like you said, you know, the best kind of players obviously can make stakes, mistakes and roll through it here. So we will uh, we will see how the action settles here. Gino, Gino, buddy. Uh, all right, yeah. Oh my God, he's blundering so hard right now. Martin, I don't know what the deal, the oils top. You, you, you were the one who programmed the oils. Like this is the weirdest thing. Stop complaining and stop picking fights with Path. Just, just settle down. You won the game. It's okay. All right. Um, both right, players so pretty very similar, similar here. Opening here. Yeah, yeah, similar opening here. Gene going straight up top. He wants to target that airport. He wants to bring in the early pressure. Now, Gene is a man of map control. We saw this in his games versus Path. Path did such a great job with those bunkers. But uh, we saw it with it. He's, he's, he loves, likes taking control, even though Saw is the one with the with the huts. Three huts versus one hut. I want to see Saw take this advantage of the hut advantage and grab the genetic mutator early. We spoke about the synergy. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. You see that energy yep. there, Ivor? Yep. Gonna That's get in. what I'm talking about. Yeah, and that first, the timer on this mutator is quick, guys. You get it in early, um, your opponent, and a lot of times, like in this position, Gene doesn't have the money to build an engineer. So you, it's not going to be immediately countered like sometimes we see later in the game where it goes back and forth. I love that early genetic grab. Uh, para drop back left. Looks like Saw sees it. Dog's coming out. Both players really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Could come down to who can balance their economy more and take the leg up as we move in to the late opening game here with the Rhinos. Both players go offensive with their pair drop, get very little value. Ooh, and does. Oh. Ah, and you hate to see that. He was playing it right. He had map control. He was in position, and he let that engineer just sneak his way in. Uh, <laughs> you know, with this sneaky, sneaky energy, and Gene is a master class in tank control. So if it's gonna come down to just even rhinos, chances are Gino's, just Gene is gonna come up on t out on top here. He's uh, so good at TC here. Two war factories for Gene, still only one for Saw here. Is Saw gonna go for a radar again, or is he gonna go for m the multi war factory strat? Yeah, it was. Yo, Path and Martin, let's chill, guys. Come on, let's enjoy the show. We got more games going on here. Yeah, God, God, I can't. It's like it's like if it's not one thing. If all the players show up on time, and we get a good game. Then the chat has to be like, "Oh, Ivor's day is going too good. Let's all be really difficult." <laughs> it's like no one can just let me have my phone up here. Like someone always has to mess with me. All right, Desolator's out now, and I think Saw. That makes sense. I mean, that first play, it looked like Saw. Saw he was getting behind on Rhinos. He had the Desolator play and the tech push up his sleeve. Um, I think that's probably could be the move against Gene here as well. Um, not sure how well Saw knows who Gene is. Oh, oh, oh big engagement oh, here, oh. and and Saw tanks out of position you see him running in that line his fodder's a little late but gene goes for the building still comfortably able to get it here desolator's too late and the conscripts yeah. conscript pair drop could get that oil with a big oh, big... oh that would yeah, be yeah absolutely he needs be... to... okay he does the play deso and he's doing a great job using those desolators up top to defend so saw is still alive but gene is on three war factory saw now only rebuilding his second war factory Saw is a little bit behind here, although he does have the Desolators. It's all going to come down to how well can he use those Desolators. We've seen Desolators be crazy good and crazy OP, and we've seen them just sit around in huge groups and die to one drone. Yeah, it's it's very, I don't, it's very interesting. I don't know. I feel like Gene, 
Yeah, I, well, so I'm really loving the way Saw's using his, his fodder here, using the Desolators, using the con dogs, the conscripts. He's hanging in there with Gene, and like we talked about, when it comes down to pure tank control, Gene is about seven leagues higher, so very impressive Saw here to be able to pull this off. Absolutely, but now Gene is the one that's actually teched up before Saw. Saw now in four War Factories, Gene on three, but the IC is out for Mr. Gene here, and the tank numbers are looking pretty even. L, and here comes the Naval Yard. Saw needs to make a move quick, or it's going to come down to Dreadnought's Kirov's IC, and he is going to be dead. Yeah, yeah, the tech. Very, very nice. The Dreadnought's All out, right. the Iron Curtain's out. Oh, and Gene deploying again. That's the tenth time he's lost uh, an engineer trying to get that uh, Genaguten up. <laughs> a huge deso out of Gene. And look at all those tanks just chilling on desolation. Ooh. Ooh. Painful. Pain oh, they're all smoking, Ivor. Look at all. Wow. It's a disgusting habit. Very unhealthy. Why are they doing it? Anyway, Dreadnought's coming in here. Yeah. Oh, oh. man. Saws, saws, saws in so much trouble. All these tanks. Oh, my God. I turn on emote chat. All the people being the most annoying are mods, so they just keep talking. I love it, you guys. I love it. Hey, <laughs> hey, the day that I just post a middle finger emoji and don't show up and you guys don't see me ever again, just remember. Remember how difficult you all made my life. <laughs> all right. Oh, my God. And so, on, guys. and Gene accepts this base trade. Gene probably should have just gone back and cleaned up these, uh, well, I don't know if I guess he feels like he could win oh. it. And he moved his MCV as well because he was worried about losing that base trade. So Gene Look knows how to base the, trade. Oh my god, and Gene loses the Iron Curtain. Oh my god, that was actually incredibly close. This Elite Desolator. Oh my god, an Elite You don't see that too often because they don't become Elite from radiation. They only become Elite from actually shooting their gun, the Rad Beam. So they're killing tanks with oh their Rad Beam right now. And look at the damage they're doing. And he actually defends the Dreadnoughts. Gene has his MCV in the top left inside. Oh my of god, Saw. Gene's MCV <laughs> is top. Wait, what is happening? The drones. I'd love to see Saw keep pumping drones here. That has to be the move, and it prevents Gene from moving his MCV. The MCV, he's oh not a sentry. <laughs> oh no. Gene. Uh, Holy shit. Gene loses his MCV. Wait, so what, what do we have, have left? Got? Okay. So S Saw still has Saw his battle lab. Yeah, Saw is the one with the lab. Gene without a lab does have the nave that doesn't really help him much. I think that if Saw plays this right, he actually wins, which is absurd. What a crazy game we're seeing here, guys. Can he hold this push from Gene? A lot of Desolators, a few Rhinos, but Saw actually is the one with the higher Deso numbers and the higher Rhino numbers here. Holy shit, Saw is looking so strong right now. And don't forget the genetic mutator. Those Desos could become Brutes at any moment. There we go. That's the move I was the waiting for. And a Kirov in. comes from Saw as well. Oh my god, Saw is oh. bringing the Kirov. Saw has the Elite Rhino. <laughs> oh my god. Down. He made an MCV. G made an MCV. Uh, what? Oh. what are we seeing here? Gene, Two Kirovs coming out. Gene on 30k. And again, and so Gene has an MCV. The Kirovs are coming. I don't... I don't think, I feel like Gene, Gene doesn't really have a winning move here, I don't think. Well, you know what? These Dreadnoughts aren't going to do anything. The Dreadnoughts can't shoot top right. So the Dreadnoughts are out yeah, of range. So, yeah. oh, that's. That's all useless. He does have the money, right? He has so many oils. He doesn't have enough production. He might as well just spam things for fun. I yeah, don't even know. Yeah, that's a good what. point. In case, in. in case Gene moves his MCV again. <laughs> And no, ah, oh, no War Factory for Gene. And now Saw's gonna come in and clean up. GG is called. Gene calls GG. And what a barn burner of a match. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. I wish what? I could have. I wish I could have truly enjoyed that and not had my chat annoying the shit out of me. Great. Thank you guys for taking that beautiful experience away from me. All right. All right. A barn burner nonetheless. Uh, so, yeah. So, MZIN and Snark. MZIN's debut month, if you guys remember a couple months back, he went from, like, D5, won all the way up, of course. It happens. People get confused. Whatever. Anyway, he was, like, wrecked his way through four divisions. Uh, then him and Snark... Him and Snark had a show match that came down to a barn burner. Then him and MZIN faced each other in the D2 championship and had a barn burner. Last month they faced each other again, had a barn burner. These guys have always been at each other's throats. It's always gone back and forth, and it's always fun to see them play. Now, uh, with that being said, MZIN, I feel like I feel like he's evolving in real time, uh, to be fair. Coming off a loss to Ravage, though, we'll see if that shakes him a little bit, if he loses any of his mental fortitude here, or if he can keep that same aggression we saw from him early on in the tournament. Uh, but Snark, uh, Snark's got a plan. Snark's plan. It's called I'm bringing the GIs. Stop them or lose. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, legend when the barn burners. 
Legend, wait, I, Legend, I asked you earlier and I forgot. Can you play later today? We got because we got Quas and Luke playing. I'd like to get I'd like to get you versus uh, I'd like to get you versus uh, Luke today, Legend, if we can. All right, so so first he comes in, he's gonna evict that first hut. Very very nice. Nailbiter instead of barn burner. All right, someone ban MJ. Of all the of all the stuff today, of all the nonsense I've dealt with, MZIN going beast mode. Do you think so, Schmo? We'll see. Of all the nonsense I've dealt with today, um, it's changing barn burner to nail biter. That's where I draw the line. All right, all right. Oh, the, and so oh, and the rhinos are getting melted, and. And you can, so in a regular situation, if GIs are trading with Rhinos, it's never good because you're going to fall behind on your tanks. In this position, though, you actually, the value's not that far off, right, guys? So what is, what's the cost of a GI? Who knows? Oh, wait, MG, oh, MJ. I'm always, I'm confusing MJ with other MJ. No, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Matt, I always confuse Max and MJ, sorry. Max, I might have made the same joke either way. Probably not. I make more jokes at MJ's expense. So 200, yeah, so if one Rhino can get, yeah, one Rhino can get four GIs, you know. All right, so MZIN has stuffed the early GI rush, but hats off to Snark here. So Snark on the back end was able to switch over to Grizzlies. Well, a lot of players overcommit to that, the early early rushes, early infantry rushes. If they don't work, they kind of fall apart. But um, Snark does have some Grizzlies out as well here. Yeah, so Snark on five oils. Yeah, I'd have to go back and I'd have to go back and rewatch that build from Snark. A lot of players overcommit with those GIs like that uh, and put their economy behind. I'm not really sure how Snark was able to keep such a good macro with that early GI pressure. I like that. Um, I think that's a great way. I mean, if you can, if you can do both, if you can bring a GI rush, a threaten and threaten an early game, make your Soviet player throw your Soviet player off a little bit. Always nice. But if you look at MZIN as you move into the three minute mark, MZIN does not look like a player who's. Um, been wrecked by an early rush you know you didn't he still has a decent build as well but these grizzlies these grizzlies could get good value here the rhinos coming to counter So Snark already out with the BF. Snark on 3,500. I love this build from Snark. Great economic position. MZIN, MZIN way too comfortable. So MZIN had his regular build, but um, but maybe just a little bit further behind than he would want to be because he's on 8K here. So I'd love to see MZIN uh, switch over to tech, especially when the allied player techs, usually the Soviet player needs to follow suit. Uh, genetic mutator for Snark going to be coming here very, very quickly. MZIN has to be careful. He's got a nice batch of conscripts. Um, you generally wouldn't want to genetic mutate your own GIs. They're kind of expensive units, but uh, you certainly could. All right, the BF doing work. Going to chase off this attack. Yep, and he does hit those conscripts. MZIN was baiting him. I thought MZIN was doing that on purpose. I was like, MZIN must have a plan. It's like he wants to be genetic mutated. Pair drop in the base as well. Um, and yeah, when you get... So this is just a free attack here. This is a free attack from Snark. That's a genetic mutator and a pair drop. Throwing MZIN out of position allows Snark to take a big bite on the top side. And MZIN, wow, we really called this one wrong today, guys. I don't know what happened. MZIN, you know, I don't know. MZIN, I thought MZIN was looking so tough today, but he is really starting to fall behind. And I guess I do forget in his first game versus Saw, Saw did kind of blunder as well. I mean, MZIN, not to take it away from him, he's a great player, but um, I'm kind of surprised. I think he was, I think he would have been my favorite for the day, and he is, uh, is falling behind here. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, MZIN has a hard time switching over to tech. He's a pretty single-dimensional player. And we've talked about that before. Being a single-dimensional player, pretty much lower than D1, you can be single-dimensional. You can have one play that works and kind of do it every time. Uh, at this level, you know these guys are competing to go pro next month, right? So at this level, these are the these are the six. The, this, the, you guys are in the top 15 blitz players that we have right now. So. At this level, I think you do have to kind of be able to diversify a little bit. Um, you know, allowing your opponents, if, you, if you're super predictable, it gives your opponent a huge advantage. Um, that's the best thing in the world, right? Would be to, say, to know exactly what your opponent's going to do. And against a player like MZIN, I think that is one of his issues, is that uh, his opponents know exactly what's coming. And look at these eagles from Snark. My god, and the BFs are rolling through. Snark's looking tough. Is Snark going pro? Snark going pro? 
Snark could be going pro. And the eagle is just wrecking him, trying to run through, trying to run, just keep these rhinos on the move away from these BFs, but really nothing else to be done here. So Snark's going to be taking that one home. <laughs> SFJ. SFJ gets you on steroids. Yeah, Zed, next time Snark asks me for game. Yeah, you guys got to stop practicing with Snark. You're getting him too juiced up. I don't know what Artie and Luke did to him today, but yeah, now he's coming for now he's coming for Zed's pro spot. Very, very well played. Player defeated. Hoorah! About, well, about, about maybe probably, probably kick off about 45 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Holy shit, that's happening today? It's happening today. The action rolls on, buddy. Oh, Luke versus Okay, okay. I'm going to concentrate on what what's happening now, but holy shit, Luke versus Gloss. That's going to be crazy. All right, so what do we got? We got Ravage on the right. We got Saw on the left. We saw Saw beat Gene, and then we saw Ravage just beat MZIN. Both these players dialed in. Ravage especially looking dialed in, but look at Saw coming in with a dog, making it hard. For Ravage only getting one hut there. The question is, can Saw steal his other huts? It's going to be interesting to see in the meantime a quick where war factory from mr ravage saw as usual going oil first before the war factory it seems to work out for him ivor it seems to work out for him yeah i i, I it does it does but ravage ravage we saw this early aggression for mzin as well uh wasn't enough to get anything done but certainly scary ravage gets those tanks super early uh saw already going to be behind about three rhino is going to be on the, the field before he gets one out sentry gun from saw to try to hold that top side um, but yeah, Ravage is going to be able to dance around that very easily. Absolutely. And oh, he, okay, they're engaging here. Can Ravage is going to micro down that Rhino. The Rhino is going to go down Ravage so good with these little clicking on the tanks, right? So crucial, guys. You really want to click those tanks when you have an advantage. And that's going for the barracks. You see how he changes direction so quickly, Ivor, right? He's chasing a tank. No, now he's taking out your barracks. And all of a sudden, you know, he snipes that building and gets out of there. And now you're behind because you need to rebuild your barracks. Yeah, 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 and the barracks, the barrack cancel, that's big when you're in a base early on, or attacking a base really at any stage of the game. Sometimes there's better targets, but the barracks is always nice, guys. It's hard to appreciate that as a spectator. Uh, you know, a lot of players, a lot of these guys who watch these games on YouTube and stuff, they haven't played in a long time, they forget, but you have to have a building to build the next building, right? So if someone destroys your barracks, that cancels your sentry gun. You can't build a war factory, so it really does throw things off. It's always a, always a valuable hit early on. Exactly, there's a tech tree. There's a very, very important tech tree. And uh, it, it's so helpful. You know, three sentry guns and a barrack snipe. That's huge value for Ravage right at the start. But Saw coming in with a big army than Ravage. Now he did cost him a few tanks. Can Saw make this push happen? Oh, this is looking dangerous. Ravage is going to go for the barracks. Oh, and it's going to back off just in time. Yep. Gets it. Oh, and the conscripts. The conscripts coming in now. And Saw is ahead here. Saw And Saw sometimes, we've seen Saw question himself a couple times in these positions where I think he needs to continue to push here and get some more value. Oh, but now, actually, I take that back now. I, I felt like Saw should push. Now I feel like Saw should not push. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> These things flip so quickly. Ravage doing an incredible job in defending there. But Saw returned the favor, right? Ravage came in, sniped some buildings, did some damage. Saw just returned the favor. I want to see someone go for that gen genetic that genetic mutator. That's a huge advantage on this map. If you can afford it, make an NG, just grab it. You know, that's another thing your opponent has to constantly think about. And, it, you know, the synergy with, with uh, Paradox is just huge here so right now they're staring at each other with an army of rhinos we have two war factories for ravage two war factories for saw saw's eco looking much better than ravages at the moment i'm liking saw's position my hey, ivor yep yep yeah i think uh with with at this point you know we hit the three minute mark kind of an early mid game uh, but both players saw's gotten a little bit more offensive value uh, after ravages early hit and um and now the the economy i think is going to be really really big here saw now on three war factories enough money to support it ravages broke uh tough position for ravage absolutely three war factories and just pumping them out on 8k we see six seven war factories for saw ravage on six no sorry seven as well but he must you, know, you see that's the first oil right yeah that's going all first instead of war factory first so ravage did get the early aggression but saw now has the eco and uh it's quite a big difference it's interesting i'm gonna have to analyze this game a little bit more deeply to see why there's a 10k difference in their eco but saw is pushing in here as we speak what is ravage's plan he's gonna go from is, is this a base trade 
Yeah. It's going for a base trade. And Saw should not accept a base trade here. Uh, I Where's mean, the drones? Where the drones? Where the drones? And so Saw, Saw's, Saw's army's AFK on the right side. Saw needs, so Saw's going to start trying to pump drones. And this is exactly what Ravage wants when in this position for Ravage. Ravage wants him to accept a base trade. Ravage is now bringing back. And Ravage, oh my god, Ravage just made a glorious play. He split most of his army back to defend. And Saw doesn't have very many buildings to click. And an elite rhino out. And no more war factories, and yeah, there's just four power plants and a sentry gun for Ravage. But Saw's gonna go back to defend here, but Ravage still has a war factory. That's the difference here, Ivor, and it's gonna be a huge one. Saw needs to turn around right now and take uh, the out that last war send factory, it. or it's over. Yeah, Saw's gotta send it, uh, and Saw only has a few buildings left, so Ravage could try to maybe try to backdoor downfield. Uh, Ravage should probably be trying to go for the base trade here. This is a very complicated and oh. weird situation to be. Uh... Oh, Saw's gonna win this, Ivor. That oil snipe took out the war factory, took out a lot of Ravage's units, did huge damage, and now Saw with the elite, he's gonna take it home, taking out the power drop. Wow. No more unit production for Ravage, and that's it, it's over. Wow, Holy. that was that was very, very interesting. <laughs> wow, and Saw takes it home. He won MZIN and he won Ravage. Who is this guy? Man, it's hard to call it today. I think if you would have let me switch my bet on who would, was gonna win this series, I would have switched it four times today. Um, I would have just now switched it from Snark back to Saw. <laughs> it was on you for a while though, Snark. <laughs> Do Ravage versus Saw. We're gonna, okay, so these three, Ravage, Saw, and MZIM, we're doing a tiebreaker, here's how it goes. All three of these guys are gonna play each other once, we're gonna do this quick, and then there, if they all tie again, the person with the fastest wins. So the fastest win goes on, and then we're gonna get a championship. We gotta do this, we can do this, we can do this. Uh, the, the YouTube comment, Ed, is just like, this Ed guy's always losing. I'm like, I'm like, Ed's been playing the game since before you were born. He comes and hangs out, and he puts on a show, and hangs out with us for fun, okay? Ed's not here for blood, all right? I was like, settle down, YouTube commenter. YouTube, YouTube commenters being mean to Ed. All right, all right. So we got Saw in red on the right. We got Ravage in yellow on the left. Um, so, so what, what? These guys just played Snark, is that right? Saw just beat Ra or Ravage. Just yeah, beat yeah. Saw, Saw just beat Ravage. It was a crazy base street situation there, if you remember. And uh, no, back, Ravage forth, beat back, Saw, something. right? Nope, don't know. Saw won there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, right, 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 right. Okay, okay. I got it. I got it. All right, so. Yeah. So again, guys, this is the three-way tiebreaker now. So we got these, these, so Snark's in the championship. We got three guys tied up. They're all going to play each other once. We're going to bust these games out. Uh, if these guys all tie, so if each player wins one, loses one, then the player with the fastest win will win. So in the tiebreaker round, not only do you want to win, uh, you want to win quickly if possible. Okay, interesting. So we're going to have three quick games here. Ooh, Ravage gets a her first hit on the Rhino in the bottom. It could be they're going to kill each other. No, okay, so Ravage does win that tank fight in the bottom. That dog coming in handy, but Ravage, okay, loses that tank in the bottom. Coming in in the top right now, Ravage bringing on the pressure early on. He doesn't have his huts, though, so keep that in mind. That's a little advantage for Saw. Ravage is going to take chip damage going down the center. Saw is not going to take chip damage going down the center here. And Ravage coming in from all directions, splitting Saw, Saw. Putting a sentry gun down the bottom. Can he defend top as well? Ravage coming in with some serious splits here. Right? Yep, yep, yep. And looking tough. And yeah, so he's got, he's got a good position. Oh, sentry gun. Nice sentry gun from Saw to hold. Uh, Ravage is really strapping his economy right now. Uh, Saw in a slightly a better... Good micro out of Ravage there. Yep. Right, Saw does manage to defend, but at what cost? Three sentry guns, boys. Four sentry guns out of Saw. That is an expensive defense there. And we see it coming off here as Ravage goes to two war factories, three oils here. Uh, I prefer to go four oils before I go second war factory. Saw, on the other hand, on one, two, three, four, five, six oils here. Can he defend this push from Ravage? If he can, his economy is going to be freaking fantastic here. Ravage, great micro. Just fantastic yep. micro out of Ravage there. Yep, and the veteran tank as well. Needs to be very, very careful. When that, when the next sentry comes up, he does need to get away from it very quickly with two tanks. Needs to keep targeting the tanks, try to reduce the value of the counter punch. Ravage with another group coming here. Gets offensive with that conscript push, but so now Ravage has these five tanks. Saw only has a couple tanks, but Ravage is, Ravage is broke. Ravage on three Three factories now. Uh, yeah, his money, his money is keeping up. Ooh, in range oh, of a sentry micro. gun. Oh, in the range of two sentry guns. Targeting the power. Dives on that power. He's going to sit in that in that triple sentry triangle. Triple sentry death triangle. Quad. 
quad century death triangle. Well, Why? it's worth it. He's getting these power plants, Ivor. And guess one low so. power for Saw is devastating now. Slower production, that's going to be a win or loss game. Their power is one of the first things you want to snipe if you're going into a base. And Ravage has been relentless this game, Ivor. He's just relentless. Wow. Look at him. Wow. He's not stopping. Defensive pair drop from Saw just trying to hold on in this top side and Ravage is hammering. The, the tanks are now waypointed. Uh, and Saw not switching over to drones uh, probably could, right? Saw now on 7K. Saw could go radar, deso, try to slow things down here. But uh, the problem is to see an attack like this from Ravage and the fact that Ravage's economy isn't in shambles. So that's the scary thing is part of you is like, Holy oh, there's so shoot. much coming at me. There's so much aggression. If I can just hold, I'll be okay. Part of you thinks that, but with Ravage, it's just going to keep coming. Uh, his money's still going good. He's on five war factories. Wow. It's just relentless. Look at this guy. Ravage is coming in, microing down tank after tank after tank after power plant, just slowing Saw down. Saw can't keep up with his production. He's, Ravage has six war factories back at home. Yeah. What? Ravage is on a rampage. Ravage is on a rampage, and the MCV goes, look at this guy, Ivor. Relentless is the word, and he is just crushing Saw. From the beginning, non-stop aggression, splits, microing down those things, just clicking them one after another, getting the platforms, and GG is called. Wow, 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 wow. All right, all right. So here we go, here we go, here we go. So Snark going to the championship. We got a three-way tie between Ravage, Saw, and MZIN. Uh, they all went three wins, two losses in the prelims. So now they're playing each other in tiebreakers. Uh, we did have Ravage. Ravage did just beat Saw. So if Ravage beats MZIN, He's going on to the championship uh, with Snark. Simple as that. Absolutely. And Ravage last game. What a beast, Ivor. What a beast. Yeah, yeah. Ravage, Ravage is on an absolute rampage right now. I'm not sure what uh, what the counter is for this. His, his, got, his build order is perfectly down. He's got 15 war factories, so many rhinos thundering down, and, uh, and good tank control and decision-making backed with it. So Ravage is looking super, super scary right now. Uh, we'll see what MZIN can come up with. Absolutely. Can MZIN keep up with Ravage's relentless assault here is, and are we going to get a, a, an early game attack here again? Ravage waypointing his Rhino. He's, yeah, he's going for it, Ivor. He is going to be hyper aggressive again this game. I have a feeling it worked out for him last game. He's going to go for it again. But MZIN, just a split second ahead of him. Uh, no, I take that back. Ravage has an extra power. No, he doesn't. Never mind. Yeah. Split second ahead of him. Now the second power plant comes out for both players. And they're going to have a bit of a staring competition here down the center. Uh, MZIN clearing out that hut early. Doesn't want Ravage to have that advantage later on when there's rhinos and the hut there. So you want to clear them out early if you possibly can. Absolutely a great idea there. And uh, MZIN coming in with some fodder here. We're going to look at the eco here. It's going to be a very delicate balance. Ravage making a sentry gun and a bit of fodder here. That's going to make him go broke right away. You're going to see right now. Ravage is... Ravage, oh, and he went for another war factory. Bad, bad yeah. decision out of Ravage here, I'm afraid. He's going to go broke. MZN is going to be able to keep producing. And sooner or later, Ravage is going to fall behind. Look at this. Look at his money right now. Yep, yep, yeah, and Ravage, uh, Ravage had that plan that had been working, but it's 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 on, like we talked about, like that razor-thin margin, um, having to switch over, doing things a little bit differently can throw you off here, and MZIN should be able to pull ahead here, but Ravage has those conscripts, those dogs in the mix, um, we'll see if Ravage, it's hard to say in this position for Ravage, he doesn't, so when you're broke, you don't really have a defensive advantage, you can't rely on multiple oh. sentry guns, oh, nice, nice, nice push, control. and MZIN Huge has the money for it, where's the sentry gun? He should have already had one down. There should be another coming a little late. Not a great placement. Uh, Ravage able to duck away from it. Grabs that power plant. Ooh, Ravage, ooh, Ravage gets his tanks a little strung out there. Yeah, but he does get a power, which means MZN is low power, 50% production speed while you're low power. Well, up to 50% production speed while you're low power. And Ravage's economy in shambles here. Okay, now he has six holes. He should be able to support three war factories at the moment. MZN, on the other hand, with a radar and desolators out on the field. <laughs> Why aren't they grabbing the mutator, Ivor? Why? Yep, you gotta be thinking. You gotta be thinking that. And I guess it's like we've talked about the opportunity cost. There's only so many things you can do it, be doing at one time. But I think certainly on this map, as soon as you gain map control, if you feel like you have a leg up, uh, you know, on your macro as well, getting in there, grabbing that genetic mutator, certainly a great way to tip the tide. Especially on this map, we have a lot of conscripts on the map right now. Good time for a mutator. Absolutely, Ravage making. He knows it's a hot spot for power drops, so he makes makes a bunker at the top right, just fills it up, and then another defense in the in the top right half of the space. So he's well defended. He has another bunker down in the bottom here, and look at MZN grabbing that mutator. Like we said, three war factory, five war factories for Ravage at the moment, but he's completely broke. 
Yep, yep. He is on six oils now, but it's tough. But you see, the thing is, he's building these bunkers, right? He has four bunkers. Last time he did this, he didn't have any bunkers. So he's got four bunkers out. Uh, he has been building some fodder and stuff like that. And that's uh, that's throwing him off a little bit, throwing off his build. And the problem is, what once you start going broke, that slows down everything you're doing, right? So that slows down the time it takes for you to get your next oil out. Um, it works against you across the board here. Uh, but still has a very scary amount of, of, of rhinos. Where is this conscript shooting something at? Oh my god, there's one conscript... Look at this one conscript oh, top in, right. In Ravage's base. Oh, oh my god, that's so it's, weird. Not to take control. That was not so good oh. for Ravage. Another Desolator is coming in, but Ravage coming in. He has more tanks. Ravage, he does out the tank MZIN. Nice Desolator hit. The good old-fashioned broken arrow. And again, we're going to see MZIN not make the pivot over to drones, not make the pivot over to defense position. And you know what? Screenshot this, guys. 12k. No preemptive, no preemptive defensive structures. And that's going to be a huge mistake. Uh, when you're on 12k, you're out tanked. What's your defensive tab doing? Is it on, you know, is it on vacation? Spam the sentry guns, you know, have your, spam the desolators, like, do, oh my god, oh, that one oh, conscript. That is absolutely that hilarious. So it's bad. not gonna matter, but that is amazing. That is really OP conscript right there. OP conscript for sure. He but was yeah, on like one tick of health too. MZM with the genetic mutator. It's wow. gonna help, but it's not gonna no, be no, enough. No. Ravage is so enough. insanely far ahead right now in tank numbers. It's it's just a bad joke at this point. Yep, and I would have. Uh, yeah, I mean MZIN, and you hate to die with 20k, right? I mean, and that's just that's one of those positions. It's hard. It's hard to, to estimate that. You know, things some like you get into. You know, a lot of these games have been so crazy early on. But MZIN got a very nice economy. He got what he worked for, but then wasn't able to take advantage of it. So Ravage, even though Ravage was broke, was able to pull ahead. And MZIN didn't use his financial advantage there, uh, which ultimately cost him. So Ravage did win both games, guys. The times do not matter. Ravage won beat both guys here in the three-way tiebreaker. Ravage going on to the championship. Ravage versus Snark. Best of three coming at you right now. Right after that, we are running Luke and Wasp. Uh, oh, Luke and Plus is going to be epic. Before that, I need to survive this. All right, Snark. Good luck, buddy. Good luck. Holy, yeah. Uh, give me, like, two-minute break, Iver. Please, just, like, one. All one right, two-minute break. break. Yep, just you go, go play the Rocky soundtrack. Get mentally in the zone. All right. You got it, man. All right, guys. The moment we've all been waiting for here. Action rolling at you here from the Division One Blitz World Series event. Uh, quite the prelim uh, round here. We did see Snark obviously dominating, going coming uh, five wins, no losses. We had a three-way tie uh, to get into the championship. Those three just did their tiebreaker. Ravage proving that he deserves to be in the championship. So Ravage versus Snark now, of course, in the prelims. Uh, Snark was undefeated, which means Snark did beat Ravage in their first matchup. Um, but... You know, Ravage is looking like a new man now. He's, he's pretty dialed in, so this should be very, very interesting. Uh, we know Snark's primary strategy here is early GI action, but Ravage has seen that coming at him all day long. Or, I mean, seeing Snark putting it towards people all day long. So, uh, so Ravage should be expecting this. We'll see how he tries to counter it. Um, should be interesting here. It is best of three. Players are choosing their own factions. Okay, okay. So Snark, Snark a little slow, so Snark now totally broke. And so Snark now needs to be careful. He's, you, see, you see him just a little distracted, trying to defend himself on the backside. I'm not sure, because Ravage has a way to defend this GI push, though. Not even really an attempt being made, honestly. Oh, that one, that first round gets a lot of work done, though. Um, and very interesting to see Ravage. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is how you squash GIs with a rhino. It's so funny that GI rush, when it works, you're like, oh, allied's broken. <laughs> and then when it doesn't work, you're like, allied sucks, so have OP. <laughs> like, uh, pretty funny. But yeah, I mean, the, uh, the, I mean, the one thing is, you know, you just got to practice squashing GIs with your rhinos. That's really, um, it's, 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 more, it's more difficult than it looks, though. Luke says more GIs. Not everyone can click with three fingers at the same time. Yeah, when Luke commits to the GI rush, he commits about 10,000 GIs. You guys stay tuned. You guys are gonna see. Uh, you guys are gonna see Luke's allied look here uh, after this. Luke, pro player. Um, he is pr right now. I think probably the best GI rusher on the Blitz brute map in the world. The best GI rusher on the Blitz brute map. That's something to be proud of. Something to be proud of. I've never seen Luke fail a GI rush. 
All right, and now, but Snark, but Snark did a good job again out on the backside now with Grizzlies to defend this position and the GIs, and the second wave is coming and Ravage a bit out of position here. Let those GIs get a little too close, get a little bit of value done. Um, and Snark might be able to close this one out with Grizzlies now. Ravage is broke. There will not be a sentry gun coming to support and Snark's gonna take this one home. The GI, the one-two punch. I like that, I like that. The GI rush as the punch number one, set it up, little jab. And then the final punch, Haymaker style. Uh, yeah, with the with the Grizzlies. Very, very well played. And another round of GI is coming. Yeah, Luke OP. Uh, that's for sure. Desolator out now. A little late to the party, though. Good placement on that radar up on the hill so the Desolators could come out. But one of those positions where you can try to slow things down. You can try to stay alive. But unfortunately, do not think there's a winning move when you only have a barracks left. But crazier things have happened. Actually, I don't know. Has anything ever, has anything crazier ever happened is than uh, if Ravage somehow won this? Would that be the craziest comeback of all time? Whoops. One point four, and Ravage gonna stick Soviet. I mean, the one way, uh, the one obvious way to counter it is going allied. I mean, you go allied. You got snipers. You got Navy SEALs. You got your own GIs. You got Rockies. About twelve different things at your disposal. So that's definitely a strategy. All right. So point number two, it is best of three guys. So if Snark can take this one home, if Snark wins this, Snark will be undefeated on the day. He went five and zero in the prelims, and then two and outs the championship. Uh, would and then Snark would be going pro. Remember, guys, there's a lot on the line right now. We're talking about going pro next month. Winner of this going into the pro division, uh, into the Thrifty Three. We might be renaming it the Swifty Three uh, after Ed's recommendation because that cracked me up. Quick reminder, guys, if you are watching this on YouTube. Drop me a like, comment, and subscribe would be great. Free for you. Helps me promote Red Alert 2 content. Get it in front of the world. That's what it's all about. And another quick reminder. Come play. Come play Red Alert 2 with us. You can play it online for free. CNC Net explains it. Link in description. Go to re2cashgames.com. Walks you through it. Quick match. Quick match coming next month. It's going to be great. You guys can play Blitz. 1v1 games. You get queued up. You play with people instantly. You climb the ladder. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. All right, all right. So Snark, the GIs are a little confused. These GIs have kind of forgot their assignment, it seems like. He does have all four huts, which is nice, but that early Desolator from uh, from Ravage, and now the crazy Ivan from Ravage. So that Desolator, so Snark, uh, so Snark, is he gonna go AFC? He does go War Factory. Crazy Ivan, crazy Ivan. Oh my God. Only got, oh, that other oil might go down though. I think that oil's gonna go. What do you guys think? The engineer? Oh! <laughs> oh, that was so close. Remember, guys. Oh, Snark is our uh, Ravage is low power at the moment as well. That radar is not spinning, so his production slowed down. Remember, guys, Blitz version nine. The oils. Oh, the demo truck from Ravage. Man, things are getting wacky, but it is. <laughs> uh, remember, guys, Blitz version nine. Uh, if you get your oil two cells away from your other oils, they will not chain react. Two cells. Two cells from the MCV, two cells from other oils. And another crazy Ivan gets two oils and the AFC. <laughs> oh, and Snark. Snark now has a battle lab with one oil. Oh my God, what are we seeing right now? Uh, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, Zed was questioning the battle lab on three oils. Now Snark has a battle lab on one oil. Snark is, is broke. Snark is going to be broke. Snark will continue to be broke. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ravage is broke as well, though. Oh, I was so busy looking at Snark's wacky base, I forgot. Ravage, where is Ravage's stuff? Ravage has a juiced up Tesla coil. Oh, I love it, guys. This is why, uh, this is why these, these divisional games are so funny. You see such wacky stuff. When was the last time you saw a Legend and Marco banging out with juiced Tesla coils? All right, gonna target that radar. That's a nice move. Gonna stop the Desolator. Gets another Desolator. Oh, no, sorry, that's the original Desolator. Stuffs that Paradrop. Both offensive Paradrops are countered. All right. Oh, but Snark finds a nice opening here. That's gonna be a big chain reaction. Grabs an oil. 
foil and a war factory and even after that all that value he got with the crazy ivans ultimately though ravage put himself so broke early on ravage now without a war factory snark is so broke but snark is keeping it rolling snark's been making very very good uh, economic decisions he's budgeting Budgeting is a big part of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Budgeting is very, very important. Uh, he has those three BFs out, um, and he, he's got them juiced up. They're going to be able to get some value here. So we do see Ravage tucking in nicely. has the juiced up Tesla coils. Very, very wacky. Um, wow. Very, very interesting. Um, and a quick reminder, guys. The action is rolling on, so stick around. We got uh, Quas versus Luke. This is Division 1. The division above this is Pro. And the Pro division, always something to be watched. And we got Quas and Luke, a couple of great players, coming in right after this game. Uh, right after Snark takes home this D1 championship. Let's get it, boys. Snark, the man himself. Yeah, Marco, and I love it. Right on, right on cue, we got the GOAT coming in here saying that Snark's looking sick. Actually, sicko, which is Finnish for sick. Um, wow. And so Snark does take that home, guys. Snark is our champion.